depth anything, V2 just came out, and there's a paper as well as a GitHub repo that goes along with it. But this model, what it can do is take a single image and obtain the depth map for you using only one camera. So here, previously, we've talked about the depth map, but using a different model called Midas. So you could go ahead and check out that video for a comparison. But in this video, we'll be focusing on monocular depth estimation applications, talk about the key performance metrics, go over the problems with real labeled data, go over the advantages and challenges with synthetic data, go over the architecture that the Depth Anything V2 uses, which is called the student teacher model. We're going to go into detail of the annotation pipeline, the benchmark on standard data sets, the DA2K data set for Depth Anything V2, go over reflective surfaces, transparent objects, fine details. And finally, we will have a real-time demo using the Depth Anything V2, as you can see here on the right. So monocular depth estimation applications, usually there's a couple of classical applications. So for those, you have things like 3D reconstruction, navigation, and autonomous driving. For more modern applications, we're diving into the field of AI-generated content, so things like images, videos, and 3D scenes. So some key performance metrics that this new Depth Anything V2 is trying to hit are things like fine detail, transparent objects, reflections, uh, complex scenes, efficiency, and transferability. So these are the different things that it's trying to excel in. And you can see here, here's some uh, comparison in terms of the Marigold and Depth Anything V1. And you can see that usually the Marigold is good at certain things. And then for the Depth Anything V1, it's good at certain things as well. So the main thing that Depth Anything V2 is trying to achieve is to be the best of both worlds. So it wants to be good at all of these things while um, preserving some of the fine details and doing well when there's surfaces that's hard to detect. And we'll see later on how it actually performs, both in some of the examples that it gave us as well as in real time. So the problem with real labeled data, a couple of things that we see is that usually there's going to be some labeled noise. So due to transparent objects or the surface could be textureless or repetitive, sometimes it's going to be uh, noisy when you actually label the data. And another thing, too, is that there's going to be missing data. Sometimes the very fine details are smoothed out. So you can see here is an example. Um, the middle is on the real image, and then on the right is on the synthetic. Specifically, if you look at the grass here, grass or flowers, you can see that it's pretty much smoothed out. It's almost like it's a Gaussian blur applied to it. Uh, but here you can see that it's much more detailed. And if we take a look at the tree, you can see the same behavior. So a lot of the details of the leaves you can't quite see, but here on the right with the synthetic, you can see a lot more of the details. So advantages and challenges with synthetic data. A couple of advantages is you could define details are labeled correctly. Um, so as you can see here on the right, these are some of the synthetic images, and you can see all the details are very uh, finely shown in all the depth map. And you can also obtain depth of the transparent, this should be F, um, depth of transparent or reflective surfaces. So that's another big advantage because if you generate the synthetic data, um, it's not going to know that it's transparent. You just It'll just treat it as a solid object. But even though there's advantages, we also have some challenges. So some things is that the synthetic image can be too photorealistic and the color distribution will be uh, different between the real and synthetic. And another point is that the limited types of scenes used, so a lot of times in real life, the scenes could be more complex, and sometimes these complexities can be pretty hard to um, synthesize in your synthetic data. So if you take a look at some of these images here, you could kind of tell that it's synthetic just based on how the color looks. There's just something about uh, fake data that you could kind of just tell by the coloring that it's fake. So there might be some time before uh, pure synthetic data looks real. So hopefully when that gets better, you'll see a better improvement. 
But here we talk about depth anything, and specifically we'll go into the model architecture that they use, which is a teacher-student model. But the main idea of this teacher-student model is you want to get a lighter weight model, and it's also accurate. So you could think of, usually the teacher model is going to be a heavier model, and the student model will be a lighter model. So specifically, um, depth anything is actually based off of the Dino uh, V2 model from Meta. So the teacher model is actually using the big one, the V2G, and is being trained using the synthetic images. So you can see here in the first column, that's what it's doing. And then next up, it's going to use the teacher model to create pseudo labels on the unlabeled real images. So here you can see that in the middle pipeline, that's what it's doing. And then lastly, we have the student model. So we're going to be training the student model, and it's using the small Dino V2. And this will create, using the pseudo label real images, is going to train the student model. And then this can be used in our real application later on. So the annotation pipeline, the idea of that is first it uses SAM, so segment anything model from Meta, to sample the different regions. And then if all four models, so you can see here is testing on four models, step anything v1, v2, Marigold, and GeoWizard. So if all four matches, then they're going to resample points. If there's some problems, then the human's going to go ahead and intervene and annotate. So that's how they set up their data pipeline. And then here you can see this is the benchmark on standard data sets. So the Kitty is a pretty popular data set. And then these other ones as well are some standard data sets. But you can see here this is the performance comparison between Midas, Depth Anything, Depth Anything V1, and V2. You can see that these numbers um, in terms of some of the performance at least between V1 and V2, aren't drastically different. Some of the differences between V2 and Midas, however, is more significant. But the main key point here is that they did most of their evaluation on the DA2K dataset. So this one actually has uh, eight different categories. And some of the main categories that you can see that it's broken up into is the transparent reflective, adverse style, aerial, underwater, object, indoor, outdoor, and non-real. But here you can see that this is the comparison between the four models. Here's the extra one here called Depth FM. And then it compares it with a Depth Anything V2. And you can see that some of these accuracy percentages on the left are in the 80s. And then the Depth Anything V2 is in the upper 90s. And one thing to note is that the small compared to the biggest model, the G, is not significantly better. So you could probably go away, um, do well with the uh, real time using the small model because you won't lose too much uh, performance because you can see it's pretty similar. Now let's take a look at how it does on reflective surfaces. So here you can see that this table here has a lot of reflection. You can see in Depth Anything V1, it starts treating that as um, part of the background when it shouldn't be. And if you look closely here in Depth Anything V2, you can see that it's actually treating the reflective part of the table as part of the table in the depth map. So that's a good sign. And similarly, here in the building, you can see that it's a reflective building. And in the Depth Anything V1, it actually thinks it's a building, but in V2, it treats that as just a reflection. So it's not like it's seeing another building. And now here's some examples of transparent objects. So you can see here up on the top row, uh, there's these containers holding candies. And you can see that the Depth Anything V1, it tends to look inside of the containers, whereas in V2, it treats the containers as whole objects. And then here we have uh, another on the bottom. These are some containers on the table. You can see that it tends to see some parts inside, which is not desirable. But you can see on the depth anything V2, it treats it the surface as um, completely as a solid object. So overall, you can see that depth anything V1 tends to look inside of the transparent uh, surface, whereas V2 sees it as uh, more sees it as like an object instead of looking inside. 
And here is some examples of fine details using Depth Anything V2. So you can see that here, the first row is of a bridge. And you can see that Depth Anything V2 captures a lot of these details of the bridge, these trust members here, which is a lot of it is lost in the V1. And then here you can see that on the second row with um, this, what's it called again? The wheel, cartwheel, I forgot what you call it, but you can see that here you can see that there's a lot of details that's showing as well as in the buildings, a lot of these beams here, there's a lot more details here as well. Okay, so next up, we're gonna see a real time demo. So you could see here we have on the left, which is the feed from my webcam. And then on the right is the actual depth map. Um, so you could see that we could test out different objects. So here we have a cup. And notice that I'm using the small model here and it's a little bit laggy. It's probably gonna have different performance based on what computer you're using. But if you could take a close look at my cup, the rim is actually reflective here. And you can see that even though there's reflection, it doesn't really affect the performance of the cup. So here, I'm going to move it back a little bit, and you can see how it looks like. Again, it's doing pretty well. It's not treating that reflection as anything different, so that's a good sign. And here, let's take a look at a transparent object. So here is a container I have here, Mello Mello. It's a pretty good dessert place if you haven't tried, but you can see that even though it's um, transparent, you can see my thumb on the left. It treats this as an entire object, so it doesn't really care about what it sees inside, which is pretty good. Now, if I try opening the container and then I'm going to put a finger inside. So if you check it out, if I put a finger inside, um, now you can kind of see something going on. You can see that inside, it kind of sees a finger inside the depth map, as you can see. So um, when you look at it this way, maybe it's not quite what you expected. So you still could kind of fool it, as you can see. So maybe in this specific application, you may need extra training data. Now let's take a look at something detailed. So let's take a look at our keyboard here. So our keyboard has a lot of details. You can see that if I move it really close, you could kind of see the individual keys, which is pretty good. Now let's see how it looks when we start moving it back. So if I move it way back, you can see that um, it starts to lose a little bit of detail here. And you can't really see the individual keyboards anymore. Maybe very faintly if you look very close. But yeah, you have to be pretty close to see all the fine details. But overall, I would say the Depth Anything V2 is much better than the Midas test I did a while ago. And if you want to have the code for this video, go ahead and check out my website. I'll put a link in the pinned comments below. So go ahead and check it out. If you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.